think this car can be summarized in one action. Mm -hmm. on Ultima. We have been, it's probably faster than this. <laughs> probably. <laughs> we are ever so fortunate to be spending our week with a 9,000 RPM red line in this 2022 Porsche 911 GT3. With a six-speed manual. With a six-speed manual and big grins. <laughs> <laughs> That's all yeah. I've had this week. Big grins. I don't, I don't feel worthy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're starting this car, we're starting this review in the car for two reasons. One, because it really is so special to be in this car, driving it around. And you'll have to forgive me, I'm going to pause a moment while we come into oversteer here. already spent a little bit of time behind the wheel of this car. Oh no, we need to check our range. Thank you, Porsche. You're gonna have to be selective about where you put fuel in this car because you wouldn't want to just go to any old station. Yeah, I'm gonna go to a shell. Yeah, but Chris and I have already spent some time in this car and it's all about the driving experience. Everything regarding the GT3. It doesn't matter how it looks, it doesn't matter how it's configured inside the interior materials, the sound system, anything. All you need is... Oh my god. That. Whoa. And it's not the fastest car we've ever driven. It's not the fastest car we've had this year. It's not the quickest car that we've had this year. It's how raw this car still is in 2022. And as driving enthusiasts, as yes, car enthusiasts, but also driving enthusiasts, how happy this car makes both you and me. And anyone who respects and appreciates driving, to shift this transmission, to turn this wheel, yeah. the immediacy, the grip, the bite, the response of the motor, how quick. I mean, look how fast this thing runs. <laughs> it's all right there. There's really nothing like it. I still think it feels quite fast, though. I know you say it's, it's not the fastest, but I once you're above 5,000 RPM, oh it's mind-boggling. Like the noise, the vibration, it's just unbelievable. Like I, it's it's hard to find the right adjective. You're right. It's it's it's, it's seriously unreal. That naturally aspirated crescendo that you get, that it's both, it, it's perfectly paired between the sound, the vibration, and the speed. And it continues to force you back into your seat more and more. Yeah. In fact, it's one of the most similar experiences that you can get on four wheels to what, ooh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is the first 911 GT3 review <laughs> ever to be interrupted by two with grown men I didn't, I didn't <laughs> acknowledging want the green escape. <laughs> like somebody stole your car, Charlie. <laughs> That one doesn't look nearly nearly as nice as mine. Yeah, right. <clears throat> this is the closest experience on four wheels that I've gotten to what you get on two wheels on a motorcycle. Oh, that high okay. revving, very visceral feel. And every time when you shift a motorcycle transmission, it's a very mechanical feel. It's the same as this, so notchy, so clunked into place. Right. And yeah, you're right. When I just get on it like this, that's not very fast. There's no, no big turbo whoosh, but it's the fact that it just builds and builds and builds. Also, I'm pretty sure I got lift off oversteer on this in the winding road drive coming around. Yeah, probably, yeah. I you lifted get, off a little and it was like, whoa! Yeah, you get some sketchy stuff with <laughs> rear engine cars yeah. sometimes. And I talked about that with Rob Holland when we were driving the, the Cayman GT4 RS out in, uh, out in California. I said, yeah. the Cayman GT4 RS is cool, but doesn't it feel a little too perfect to you? Because the, the mid-engine car is, as we all know, the perfect formula for going faster on a racetrack because you get that, it's, it's, it's a balanced slide, sure. it's very neutralized weight. So for me, personally, someone who cares more about uh, 
communicating and dancing with a car versus actually like trying to get the fastest lap time possible. Right. I would rather have a car that I know if I screw up, it's gonna bite my head off. This car is not just gonna be friendly. Oh, don't no. worry about it. I'll take care of you. No. No. If you screw up in this thing, it's yeah. going to bite your head off. I filmed a video on this car briefly last night for my personal channel, and I summed it up pretty much that way because we've driven the Turbo S. Yes. It's bonkers fast, but it's it's fast in a different way. It only revs to like 6,500 RPM or something, and it's a safe fast. It's yes. insanely fast, but you have this feeling of safety in that car. It's all-wheel drive. It's a PDK. You don't feel like you're just going to die in that car. This car, you have to respect. You have to earn your safety in this car, <laughs> and... That's really cool. I love it. I yeah. really do. This, as you all know, is the first section of our review. We're going to summarize more of our thoughts in the next few uh, next few days, and obviously we'll start that part with a walk around and, and talk a little bit more about the other aspects of this car. But if you're the type who's just going to watch the first four minutes of a video and then click away, it's more important for you to see the inside and hear the experience of driving this car because really, even though Porsche still makes it look cool, fancy and all this stuff, None of that matters. It's all... The way that the car sort of like stuttered back down as I got off the throttle, I mean, I know that I really genuinely have to be careful pushing it in here. Yeah. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping even throttle and not reducing too much throttle and not get that lift off over steering. Yeah. I'm keeping the car balanced. I'm getting off the gas first, balancing the car, settling it in, and then just giving a little bit of throttle to, to get back into the rear weight of that car as I accelerate through. And I'm clenched and holding on. Right? Understandably so. Yeah, it, it, this is a car that... The only other GT3 I've ever driven was memorable, and, and this, is, this is just that way. Yeah. It really is. And the other thing that's good, I'm gonna let Chris get behind the wheel here in a minute to take us back to DMHQ. But the other thing that's good about this GT3 still being so great is a lot of normies, a lot of people who haven't experienced the Porsche lineup would say, oh, you should just get a Cayman GT4. No, they're different. <laughs> they really are different. And I don't know. get me wrong, I'm not saying that the Cayman doesn't have its place. It yeah. does, it truly does. But there's a reason that this one costs, what? Seven, no, like 40 or 50 grand more than the Cayman GT4 RS, uh, and maybe like 60 oh, or well, 70 more. RS, certainly, just a regular GT4, it's probably like, 60 grand more. Yeah, 60, but 70 after, grand more. I mean, after markups, it's a $300,000 car. I know, but let's not talk markups. It's weird right now in the market. Let's just let's just talk what the car is, MSRP. I mean, this does probably, feel probably 200 like you're getting... Aspect. Yes, it does feel like you are getting a truly unique product because there are a lot of other cars in this price range that I think are better suited for certain people. I would say there are, if you just care about looking cool and like not... this guy. Yeah, exactly. This guy would be more of a McLaren owner or a Lamborghini or something maybe. But this is going to be the car for the driver. And with that, I will give the reins... Here it is, our first outside look at the GT3 RS. No, not RS, oh my gosh, can you imagine the RS? Yeah, <laughs> let's talk about that when we get in, because <laughs> I have thoughts there too. I had that thought yesterday of how is it possible that they make a more hardcore track going version of this car it's like it's 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 mind-blowing that you can have one that's even crazier than this another point did you do front end lift not in here no i think it's okay yeah I think you're fine. another uh data point to your point of how much you have to respect this car this is probably one of the first press cars we've had in a really long time I missed it no we got it that time no, i didn't it's still alive did it? there we go this is one of the first cars we've had in a really long time that I haven't put into track mode. Oh, I haven't either. Yeah, because no. I'm, I'm like, I, yeah, I just really don't need to be doing that. Let's show everyone what auto blip does while sure. I'm driving. <laughs> well, 
Well, I just wanted them to think that auto flip was on. That was just oh, such you're, a good heel toe. You're so smooth, right? Auto blip. I mean, um, <laughs> very good heel to toe for Oh, blip. did you like that? Did you catch the edge that uh, literally curbed his car coming around? The <laughs> no, I didn't. Should have beat RNL. Yeah, you should have. Oh, well, well, he appreciates it, I'm sure. Yeah, let him take a look at the car. You notice how when you roll back, it turns the reverse camera on? I've never rolled back. I've been always moving forward in this car. Okay, well. You're a very good stick driver, Chris. You have a very nice uh, clutch release. Thank you. Yeah, I... <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> there it is. Of course, a General Motors product will be slowing down your yeah, oversteer. Yeah, that, that's okay. They got, they got all the good oversteer with you. I'm just yeah. making noise. I'm just happy to be here. Oh, he changed his mind at least, but... Well, one person did. One person did. Let's see if you think they'll stop. Uh, it's entirely possible. It's a handicap plate Chevy Traverse, so... All bets are off. Oh no, it's not a handicap, it's, it's a vanity plate. Constantly checking the mirrors for any Ford Explorers, Chevy Tahoes, Federales. There is a Crown Victoria coming up, but I don't think they use those <laughs> anymore, do they? I hope they don't. <laughs> if they did, I'm sure you could outrun it. Oh shit, it is coming at me pretty hard. With cop lights on it. No, he's probably just a degenerate who likes to act like he's a cop. I was gonna say, they definitely don't use those anymore, do they? No. I hope not. I haven't seen one in years. If so, we'll be utilizing off the record. Yeah, right. I think those are just for men with small complexes who uh, need to feel important with the car they drive. Yeah, that's true. This is a great example of when those people in the internet comments are all. No, I'm not. I don't want electric cars. I, I I like my noise, and I want to hear gasoline's the way to go. This is one of the few cars I agree with them on that point. There there can be no replacement for this car in the electric no, there future. Can't. They're just it will not be the same. Oh now you get to go uh, be face to face with Mister with, with Mister Officer. Are you pretty sure that this is not a cop, not a cop car? Uh, you know, <laughs> I would. I'd be pretty confident to say that it's not. He is looking over here, though, and it's quite uncomfortable. Yeah, would you rather be arrested or have your car stolen? <laughs> well, neither. <laughs> <sighs> Excellent. Well, we will be tuning back in with you in a few days after Chris and I have fully lived out our fantasies of being owners of Porsche 911 GT3s and uh, tune back into us as we scheme try to figure out how to leverage our lives to make it so that someday we are owners. Yeah, we're going to start our own cryptocurrency. Yes. Um, Chris coin. Tough coin. Tough coin. DM coin. Damn coin. GT3 coin. GT3 coin. Here it is, the last night with the 2022 Porsche 911 GT3. I don't love shooting on Sunday nights because I feel like the energy is not quite there. Yeah. But we're also just a little bit, a little bit somber because this is our last time with such an amazing machine. Taking a look around it after we did the first part of the video, pretty much exclusively inside the car, because that's really what matters with a vehicle like this is right. how it is to drive. But I've been impressed by nearly every element of this car. Rocking Goodyear. Eagle F1 tires. I was thinking they would be some sort of Michelins, but I looked it up. They were actually the Goodyear Eagles and very impressed by the grip. I never once even, and to be fair, I'm not going to push a car like this quite as hard as I would push something like a Miata or, 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 or yeah, Kona yeah. N, BRZ, Mustang, anything. But even a few of those corners that I really got into it, never just found the limit. Absolute crazy yeah. amounts of grip. But we did both experience little bits of liftoff oversteer, yeah. just kind of unsettled feelings. I had a couple of clenched moments yeah. in this car for sure, but it's uh, it's just an unbelievable experience driving this car. Like, 
the fact that I got to spend a couple of days with the GT3 is just still like so insane. So. It's certainly one of those career milestones of like yeah. one you will not forget. It for me, it's like first S class first 911 same. in general same and then gt3 GT is its 3. own is its own deal yeah the s580 was a pretty big deal yeah and the turbo s mm -hmm. so yeah no it really is something special can't exactly pop the trunk and look at the engine not really not really <laughs> any ability to do that you can see the yeah the uh windshield wiper fluid filler. oh good yeah that's something yeah. Did we uh, did we show them the underside of the frunk at all and kind of demonstrate no. how light here, the frunk is? No, here I have the key. Is? Oh, I was gonna pop it from the uh, from the inside. Uh, from right here. First of all, this thing's remarkably light, and that is because it's carbon fiber. Yeah. So check that out. All that raw carbon carbon fiber. Yeah, I don't think I've ever felt a car panel that's so light. No. It's really impressive, but of course with the RS. Also, sorry. Yes. This is just the most obviously with a Porsche. You first you set here and then you mm -hmm. go on. It's such a satisfying click when you shut it. It is a very well it. calibrated mm. click. Yes. Anyway, sorry. On the I was going to point out on the RS, this would be a sticker. Correct. The uh, for to save, save weight. weight. Yes. Yeah. That's a very heavy badge. It's <laughs> press. That's right. Yeah. Look at those yeah. cool lights. Yeah. These are optional lights. Yep. PDLS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's which is probably like a German word with fifty letters in it, but they abbreviate it kind of like PDK. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm surprised you being a Porsche enthusiast, you don't know how to, like, what the pronunciation for PDK is. Porsche Doppelkikungstrieb or something like that. Right, right. Yeah, That's I knew, not I knew, exact, I was going to say, close. I knew the yeah. first part as well. Yeah, it's it's a striking design because it's so familiar, but yet so impactful. I I got so many, I know you said people scoffed at you, but maybe, yeah. the, maybe you were just feeling embarrassed or something. I had so many thumbs up and waves and... I even had a guy on a motorcycle give me the motorcycle wave, even though it's oh, clearly really? not in a motorcycle. I got more positive attention in the Bronco Raptor. Interesting. In this car, like people weren't letting me merge, and I just feel like there's like negative. Like a lot of people are just so negative surrounding cars like this. You know, like high-end Porsches, Ferraris, Lamborghinis. People just, you know, they look at you and they scoff. And I guess I just didn't just give them the you. option but to not no, let me merge. Yeah. I, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. This thing is truly incredible. Let's get behind the wheel one last time. We'll do one little... Am I driving first? Yeah, go for it. Okay. One last little romp around before we bid adieu to the best driver's car that's on the market here in 2022. Now, to be fair, I haven't driven every single car here in 2022, but I've driven quite a few, and I can't imagine they're really any better than this. What, else, what other sort of driver's cars have we driven this year? Uh, black wings. Oh, those are so good. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Very, very light flywheel in this car. You have to let the clutch out very progressively if you let it out too. You can. Continue can't... as guest. Keep. Okay. I oh, usually car. press keep. I usually press deactivate. Well, what is what's the difference? Because <laughs> then you, you you go back to the same yeah the same screen no matter what. So it's like what's even the point? Right. alleged door rattle that I'm oh I can hear it I can already hear it is the Powerade bottle in here nope we're going, it's not we're going sans Powerade bottle for this trip oh god I'm gonna hate the GT3 by the end of this <laughs> it'll make it easier to say goodbye yeah that's true I, I guess that's probably a good thing nope yeah, there is a deafening door. door it's very rattle. uncharacteristic of Porsche to have interior build quality issues because I, usually, like Porsche is known. Like whenever you go on the internet and you see videos of people like pressing on BMWs yeah. and stuff and whatever, everyone's like, "Oh, Porsche would never make any noise," and generally they don't. Right. So this is like very strange. Yeah, uh, I, I feel bad if, if Frank or Luke is watching this far into the video. I, I feel bad leaving the the creek in there because we used the patented Powerade bottle fix for the first section of the video, but the key is to just keep the engine revved about 5,000 and then you can never hear anything else. Oh, the front end was still lifted up during that. I'm surprised we didn't take off. I know. <laughs> really? Yeah, this, it's, it's so satisfying to, to drive this car. 
I I filmed two videos on this car for my personal channel, and I I was struggling the whole time because there like aren't adjectives that are strong enough to describe the feeling this car gives you. At 9,000 RPM. <laughs> I think the most pure way to describe it is just that little that little laugh and smile that you have <laughs> on your face. Literally, I, I, I put 150 miles on this car and every time, either when I was with Alyssa or just driving alone, like she'd look over and any pull, I just had a grin on my face. Just every time without yep. fail. Yeah. It's the noise, it's the sensation, the power, and the feeling of every other input too. because where you just shifted those two times is where you'd naturally be shifting at the top of the rev limit in yeah. most cars, most sports cars even. Yeah. But there, it's almost like you have a NOS button. It's like a reserve, power reserve. That yeah. Like, oh, you need to go even faster? Here's 2,000 two extra RPM to use. Oh, my God. GT3. Yes. For some of the Proper. practical elements of this car, Alyssa put her purse and sunglasses in this little, little uh, mesh thing. Oh, right the there. mesh thing. Yeah, yeah, I put something in there. I'm forgetting what it was. Okay. Well, you put quite a few things in the front earlier this week. Yes, I put my entire camera bag full of everything, a carpet cleaner, a bottle of cleaning spray, and four microfibers. And they all and they only fill up like half the front. Yeah, front's practical, man. It really is. I also brought your Asian zinc sauce home no. today. No way. In the front. Are you serious? Yeah, but it's at my house. I left it there accidentally. But you, brought me, you brought me half an Asian zinc sauce. I did. I, hey, <laughs> I, it was yours. You were owed it. That's really funny, actually. You got a cup holder right here, should you be drinking in your GT3. Yes, or there's one right here if you'd like to block yourself from shifting. Yeah, that's a poor, poor location for that. That should be an option. You should be able to remove that. You can. You oh. can replace it with an ashtray. Eh. Or like a, which is like a cubby. Almost. Fair enough, fair enough. For that, you have to spec on the smoking package. And you can take this true. out. Smoking the tires. There, that comes out. I think it's clipped in. But, yeah. Um, and you can put a little ashtray in there. <sighs> yep. Not too much more to say. Well, you can let them hear some other some other good sounds before, yeah. before we let them go. Just pretty much. Into the sunset we go. If we cared about Winding Road and the view count, we would uh, film a drive right now for Winding Road. Oh, yeah. Another thing I appreciate is you don't have to be hard on the throttle to hear it. No. You know, some cars... <laughs> You, like the Jag, for example, you, it didn't sound good unless you were full tilt. Yeah. This, you can just slowly run up the rev range and it's loud and noisy and aggressive and it sounds mm -hmm. good. And it is loud because... Oh, it's very loud. As you will have seen already in this video, yeah. Chris could hear me. Yeah. <laughs> on this big. Also, I was giving... I, I gave a ride to my buddy Dane um, 
last week or earlier this week. Emily was at my house, which is like a half mile from the road, and she said she could hear it clear as day when I got onto the main road. Wow. So. I also appreciate how, even with RevMatch on, this car demands you be a good driver. You have to be so smooth with your, your th clutch inputs and your steering inputs in order for it to be smooth. Like, even that was pretty rough. Yeah. Like, and because... That means when you do get it right, you feel so good about yourself. Yeah, it's you hard do. to feel like a good driver in, in, in modern cars because everyone's a good driver. Right. Oh, there it is. We need to check our <laughs> that, range. That happened on the intro, too. <laughs> like, right here. <laughs> yeah, a car that we've certainly been turning petrol into noise with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The definition of petrol into noise. Who needs V8s? Oh, oh my god, that made me dizzy. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Well, maybe not one of our most entertaining from a humor standpoint, or energy standpoint. Definitely one of the most entertaining from our enjoyment standpoint and hopefully From a the vehicle noise. standpoint yeah yeah we're gonna end it right here sunday evening no one at the american center for mobility what is this they do self-driving here yes self-driving testing this would be convenient for us to test here wouldn't it we've met with them about it and talked well, to them quite we a few times. doesn't isn't me yeah me and us okay you notice how none of the door handle controls are actually actually like Mechanical. Yeah. Well, it's is it electronic. mechanical when you pull through to the second pole? Yes. Yeah. So the first one is electronic. First pole, electronic. Second, second pole. Manual. It's a very Porsche way of handling that whole electronic door handle thing. Yeah, it's actually quite nice. Yeah. I don't love the door handles on the outside though because they retract and then it makes them harder to open. Fair enough. Great. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in. That's about all I have to say with this. Yeah. One. Look at that sky. GT3, Golden Hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Drivers, delight. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to top this. It certainly will. Yeah. Porsche, GT3 RS maybe? We'll see you on the next one. Thank you all so much for watching. We are Charlie and Chris with Daily Motor. And as always, Porsche on. This would be a drive-on car. This should, be, should this probably should be, be a drive-on. Drive yeah. All right, cut that last part. Drive-on. Drive-on.